What's up, gang? How are you doing? Wearing my Panama hat today because it's quite sunny and warm outside on this uh, late March morning. But meanwhile in the Lego room, as you can see, there's a bit of uh, disorder in the uh, brickstead at the moment. As you can see, we're making some changes with the Lego fire station at the moment. Um, basically, um, the fire station was a little bit too long and also it didn't have um, a proper entrance uh, for the people to go in and out. So what I've done is um, actually shortened it by four studs. So this house in the corner can be expanded a little bit. Um, and we've put uh, a door in the middle um, so the uh, Lego people can um, get in and out. Um, we've lost one of the vehicle bays unfortunately, I had to sacrifice that. Um, but I think um, it still it looks a lot better uh, now that we've got the pedestrian entrance there and um, we've still got these two handsome looking fire engines um, in the bays there and I think when it's finished um, adding these archways at the top and uh, making a more elaborate roof uh, will make the Lego uh, fire station much more interesting to look at. And the other advantage is we can move the uh, police call box and um, the telephone box um, a little bit further into the corner so um, before they were kind of sticking out into the street a little bit and it didn't look quite right so now we're able to move them um, so they're all sort of neatly um, encapsulated in this little corner there um, also you've noticed uh, I'm making the little corner house there more similar to the uh, bricative version which I basically copied it from um, I'm using uh, sand blue bricks now instead of the light blue bricks uh, so they're all being replaced um, I'm using this kind of sideways snot technique um, that was used on the original building um, this part at the top, this lovely ornate gable can pretty much stay exactly as it is because that, uh, that was okay anyway but um, the actual building I'm trying to make it more like the, uh, the one on the internet that I was copying it from originally so as always I'll be taking inspiration from the uh, excellent Ladybird book series from the 1950s and 60s. Um, you can see the nice telephone box there uh, which has been copied in this lovely red telephone box that we've got outside the fire station. And we'll be having a nice uh, fireman's pole extending from the ceiling to the ground floor. Um, as per the Ladybird illustration here. Notice the nice shiny red fire engines um, which are also um, on display in the Lego version. Um, in fact if we have a look on the top floor of the fire station you'll notice I've moved the um, toilet um, to this corner. It was originally in the centre. That's so that I can put the um, the gap for the stairs and the fireman's pole kind of more centrally in the middle there um, and I've made it so you can take the lid off the top of the toilet block and um, you can see um, it's designed for a um, fire station crew with the urinal there and proper toilet and toilet roll and little sink unit there and um, inside the the main part of the fire station at the top there will be some nice furniture and um, chairs and maybe a table tennis um, table. Uh, I'm sort of copying the official uh, Lego fire station in that respect. Um, so um, stand by for some further development on this one. And on the vehicle front uh, we've uh, pretty much finished the nice vintage Roadster car there. Um, we've uh, got the tyres on the car now. Um, it's got a full set of tyres. Um, it's got the uh, correct colour um, headlights and brackets on the headlights and all the other bits and bobs. So this model uh, is pretty much complete 
Now it's got the bumper as well on the front, or the fender as I think the Americans call it. And ditto with the car behind, we've now got the um, little exhaust pipe uh, things on the side. I don't know what you call these pieces, but uh, they make it look more interesting. I think they're called greeblies in the uh, um, special effects world, where you put little bits on the side to make a vehicle look more interesting and more realistic. Um, the only thing we do need on this car is um, the front windscreen needs to be a clear piece of uh, Lego with, without the three bars in the middle. Um, so I'll try and get that from Bricklink. Now Sir Alan Bennett would like to do a quick endorsement for the show. I cast my mind back to coronation year when Auntie Ethel had that funny turn in the front parlour. I dare say you ought to like and subscribe. Yes, thank you for that endorsement, Sir Alan. That's very helpful to the channel. And moving round to the other side of the post office, um, you can see that the library building is now all but complete. Um, we've got the nice clock tower on the top there with the rather expensive clock face that I purchased from Bricklink. Um, we've sorted out the roof space with these orange library chairs that were in the original building that uh, we copied from the internet and you notice we've got the nice brass lamp uh, fixed on the wall there the only thing that's missing is the dark red door from the doorway that is on order from Bricklink at the moment and speaking of Bricklink it can be rather frustrating ordering stuff from there sometimes. Uh, you have to wait for a few days for things to arrive. Uh, I've had one or two problems recently as well um, where I've ordered um, rare parts such as um, car tyres and uh, little fiddly spanners and things like that that I need for my car engines where um, a couple of people have advertised these um, uh, these rare parts on Bricklink and then when you order the stuff with a load of other stuff to make out to sort of bulk up the order um, they've come back and said uh, oh we actually haven't got those uh, rare parts in the end anyway so you end up sometimes buying a load of stuff that you don't really need just in order to get those rare parts which then never materialise but going back to the Ladybird books um, they're a really good source um, for sort of retro design and style. If you look at these people in the railway carriage um, here, this lady is very elegantly dressed with a lovely hat and the, the gentlemen are both wearing suits, um, very smartly dressed in the uh, first class compartment there. Um, this is the Ladybird book of uh, the story of the railways and I use these books to get inspiration about um, the sort of general style of the 1950s and early 60s, even the 1940s actually, uh, when things were much more elegant and stylish. These people who came just before the baby boomers were called the silent generation and they were very um, civilised and elegant sort of people who liked to dress nicely and do things the right way and they had very charming designs for things like motor cars and railway trains and uh, indeed buildings as you can see there. Um, on a personal note, um, since the uh, Covid pandemic I've lost um, all of my parents and step parents now so that generation has kind of passed on and um, you know we can only sort of keep their memory alive by recreating the style of the 1940s and 50s uh, through these lovely Lego buildings and vehicles. So on that positive note I'll say live long and prosper and please don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps the YouTube channel and uh, I'll see you all next time.